Hi everyone, it's Cookie Lou in Arizona. It's been a couple of weeks since I checked in with you and uh, just wanted to take a few minutes this morning to uh, do a little update on my video uh, with the video because uh, I'm on my way actually in about 10 minutes to the east side of town to have a reunion breakfast with uh, a bunch of ladies that I worked with at Farmers Insurance Company back in 1985, 86. No, actually it was earlier than that. It was about 1980, 81, 82. So um, we're having a little reunion. It's going to be interesting to have all those young women walk into breakfast looking like a bunch of old ladies. <laughs> so anyway, uh, update on me. I'm doing very well. Um, give you some numbers. I had a vertical sleeve gastrectomy on February 24th, 2012 in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Dr. Armando Hoyo was my surgeon. He did a lovely job. I started my heaviest weight at 297 pounds. And I am currently down to 237, so that's a total of 60 pounds down in seven months. Seven March, eight May, June, July, August, September. Yeah, seven months. So it's uh, it's going well, you know. I mean, there are lots of people out there that have lost, you know, uh, you know, 90, 80, 90, 100 pounds within six since six months time, but. Uh, I understand that everybody's different, and I'm really not interested in losing weight fast. Uh, I'd rather lose it slow and steady, and I've had uh, a couple of major stalls in between that. My first stall was a few weeks after surgery, and it lasted 26 days. And I stick to my, uh, uh, was sticking to my diet to the T, and uh, it was very frustrating not to see the weight go down. But that's part of the process, and we have to be patient with this process. So um, I just want to take a moment to say that when we decide to have the surgery, we have to be mentally and spiritually connected to being dedicated to following the rules and doing what we need to do to prepare for the surgery and to follow the doctor's orders after the surgery and watching our food intake and bumping up our exercise slowly every day a little bit more because without being mentally and spiritually ready for this it's not going to work um so I, I really thank God that I not only was mentally and physically ready for this and spiritually ready for this back in February, but uh, I really am very blessed that the surgery went so well. I had absolutely no discomfort whatsoever. Uh, Dr. Hoyer did a wonderful job on me. I didn't have any nausea. I didn't have one ounce of painful gas left in my system. I didn't know what they did to get it out of me after surgery, but uh, I really had no pain with gas. I had no discomfort with nausea. I've never once thrown up. Um, my uh, sleeve is healing nicely. My incisions are healing nicely. I mean, you can still see them, you know, little brown scratches they look like. But, um, but I thank God that everything went well and uh, you know steady the course and do the best that I can and the best that you can to just stick with the rules and regulations and um, when you hit a stall or if you get disappointed because the weight isn't coming off fast enough just remind yourself of what you weighed before you started this process and uh, and then you see that progress is made and uh, eventually you will reach your goal or you will get close to your goal. Getting to the goal might not be what is in store for uh, all of us, but if we get close to our goal, it's good enough. It's good enough for me because it's better to be, I'd like to get down to about maybe 160, 165, even though the chart, that miserable chart, might indicate that I should be more like 140, 
145, 150, 160, 165 is fine. But you know what? If I get down to 175 and the scale stops moving downward, I'm perfectly fine with that. Because 170, 175 is better than 297. I was dying. I was killing myself at that weight. And when I look at photos of myself back then and then photos of myself now, there's quite a, quite a difference. Um, I have been fortunate enough uh, when I'm consistent with my exercising at least once every other day. I get on that treadmill, which is right behind me there, and I can do a steady 40, 45 minutes, even in, uh, a full 60 minutes. The other day I did 76 minutes, but my knees were kind of screaming at me after that. So I try to keep it down to 60 maximum. And uh, I go to the walking pool, and uh, I've even gone into the gym by the walking pool, and I've used their bicycle. And, um, and they have um, you know, very comfortable, nice padded seats. So they have uh, lovely equipment in that gym, and it's huge. I think they have like about 16, 18 treadmills and everything else under the sun in the way of, of um, uh, equipment that you can use. So I think... Now that my core is a little stronger and my weight is down uh, a bit, I think I'm going to uh, try to use some of the other uh, upper body uh, machines to kind of give myself strength. I mean, I do, I don't know if you can see, I have my rubber band here. I have this rubber band and I use this quite a bit and I do a lot of exercises with this. And I have the little purple barbells up there, or smart bells as I call them. And, uh, and I do quite a bit of upper arm uh, exercises with that. They're only about three pounds each. So uh, if I want a little more weight, you know, I will just put two in one hand. and That'll give me six pounds. And believe me, that's heavy. When you're going like this, whew, you go like this, you go like this, it's quite strenuous on the arms but my back is more limber my shoulders are more limber uh, I feel stronger in my gait I'm not stumbling and banging into the walls anymore it's really been quite a good experience for me so uh, I don't want to talk too much because I do have to head out the door but I'm going to give you a quick body shot you see um, go to the back of the room let me see if I can show you. <laughs> this is what I look like now, and it's quite a difference from where I started, and it's only been 60 pounds, so. This is me, 60 pounds down, and um, I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy. So, uh, you know, still got the belly, but it's a lot smaller than it was. A lot smaller than it was. I think this shirt that I'm wearing is a 1X. And I was um, a 3X. Two, yeah, 2X, 3X at the time. So anyway, uh, another little update on my issue with plastics. As we all know, Cookie Lou is not happy with single-use plastics. And uh, I was uh, having a conversation with the director of pharmaceutical division in my uh, Fry's grocery stores. And uh, I was given permission to bring my old vial in when I need to refill a prescription rather than getting vial after vial after vial. Uh, they did give me permission to um, bring in my own vial. I think I'm the only one in Phoenix that's allowed to do that. Uh, but uh, that was my goal, is to, uh, for, my own, for my own effort to put my own uh, foot, a good foot forward to do um, you know, good things for the environment. I'm trying to use as little single-use plastic as possible. So my doctor used to give me 30 pills. Um, well, these are my, high, uh, my blood pressure pills. And um, she used to give me 30. So every month I had to renew it. And another vial, another vial. Every time we refilled it, another vial. So I asked her to give me a 90-day prescription, which is what this is. And uh, so this way I, can, I only have to deal with refilling this once every three months. And uh, when I uh, called up the doctor, I says, I need to have my 
prescription renewed and please t change it from 30 quantities to 90. And uh, I never know when they're going to call it in. So I went to the pharmacy. I called the pharmacy yesterday. I spoke to Tom. He's the, the pharmacist there. And I says, Tom, did my doctor call my, my script? And he says, yeah. I said, did you fill? He went, oh, yeah. I said, well, this is Lucille. You know, we had an agreement. Oh, yeah, I know the note was on here. He says, and I did fill it, but don't worry about it. He says, I'll just, I'll empty it and redo it for you finally. I was surprised that he was willing to do that. So um, I came in there and I had my vial and he was concerned that he wanted it to be the Linzapril vial, you know, so that he's putting the same medication in the same vial, not just any vial, like contamination issues or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, I says, here's the Linzapril. Can you get 90 pills in there? He says, yeah, no problem. So, uh, I watched him cut, count out a fresh prescription and put a fresh label on it. He did it for me. How nice of him to do that. So, God bless Tom for taking the time and uh, and the. But you know, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. And when he handed me the vial, he says, "You know, Lucille, you're doing a good thing." He says, "And believe it or not, he says I sat down with my family after I had my second conversation with you about." about the environment and plastics. He says, and I, I mean, I, I know, I've always known that it was problems, trash. He says, but I sat down with my family and I watched that movie. He says, we do have Netflix at home and we sat down by the computer, me and my wife and my two sons. And we, um, we watched Bagot, B-A-G-I-T. He says, and it is an eye opener. He says, my wife is amazed at the amount of plastics that are causing such a, a problem in in the world, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna make a little effort to use less of it. So thanks, you know, for the heads up, and uh, it was a good experience to gain that kind of knowledge for my wife and my kids, and um, it was an eye opener. It really was, and uh, it, was, it really is a toxic product, and there's just so much of it wrapped around our food in the cans. That our food is canned in, and you know, even these things, I, I get your point. I do get your point. So when you come in, I'll be happy to do this for you. Just bring in your vial, you know. So uh, thank you, Tom. He did that. Okay, everyone. Uh, oh, one more thing I want to uh, tell you. I wanted to talk about um, Medic Alert bracelets. I know um, uh, Philly Tomcat had talked about this before and a few other people, but I got one from my mother for her dementia, uh, for her birthday, and, uh, and I also got one for myself. And this is what I got. I got one that is uh, primarily, um, where am I? Here we go. It's just some chains. It's a little, and I keep it, the medical alert in the, in the back of it so that people don't see it really and question me on it. It has a little butterfly on it. I don't know if you can see the little butterfly. So it has uh, the medical alert symbol, and when you turn it over, it'll have, well, if you can see, it'll have my name, Lucille Serpy, and it's upside down because of the way I'm turning it. That's my name, and it has on it, what did I put on here? Um, no blind NG tube. Bariatric surgery. That's what I put on here. No blind and G tube bariatric surgery because if there is an emergency, you know, and the reason, another reason why I wear it turned back like this is uh, I'm, my hands, arms are so sweaty and it's getting all stuff. The reason why I wear it like this too is that when you're, um, God forbid, picked up by an ambulance. Uh, they're gonna open your arm. They're gonna put your arm like this to do IVs or, or check pulse. So they'll see it right away when they turn your arm over. That it's a uh, medical alert symbol on here because uh, sometimes if you just keep it up here, people just think it's a bracelet. They don't really notice. And I don't like the red symbol because I think it's too noticeable. So I got mine in black, but it's definitely the medical alert symbol with the snake on the pole. And um, I think it's best if, uh, if you were in this direction so that when they do examine you or do want to put an IV or something, they can see right away, oh, this is a medical alert, and they'll flip it, and they'll see what the situation is. 
The uh, NG tube, from what I heard from some people who had weight loss surgeries who were nurses, uh, that's that tube that they shove uh, down your uh, throat. And uh, I, I guess because our stomach is really not there anymore, if uh, you know, in the way that it was, uh, you can puncture a sleeve or a pouch if they just ram it down there. So if they know that there's been some bariatric surgery, bariatric surgery, uh, I think they do it with a scope so that they actually see visually where they're going down with that. Or at least it keeps gives them a heads up that there's been some gastric changes down here and to be careful. And that's just because they can just jam that right in there. So and, and puncture, uh, puncture your innards, so to speak. So anyway, people got to go. I just want to give you a quick update on how I'm doing. I still have my boxes in the corner. I have a bunch of things in the closet that I want to box up and clear out of the closet. I'm having a big sale. Hopefully in a month or two when it cools off because it's still disgustingly hot here in Phoenix. And I got to I gotta sell a lot of junk. A lot of things that I don't use anymore. So uh, that will happen for sure. Come October, November. So, uh, okay, I have about a 25-minute ride. I have to be there at 9. It's 8.15 now, so I'm going to say goodbye for now. And I hope everyone is well. Gastric Rose, Rosemary, hugs and kisses to you. I hope that your hormones are working and you're feeling a little bit better. Um, uh, it might take a while for it to kick in, but I'm sure it will help. Uh, alleviate some of your symptoms so I'm thinking and praying for you and Connie hi sweetie Cookie Lou says hi Alfred big hugs and kisses to you and all my other friends out there Pamela Tom Tom cat Billy Tom cat of course you know uh, you were one of the first people that I communicated with when I started this journey and uh, you're all special to me so uh, let's keep in touch and let's do the job and get it done and maintain well like most of you are doing and i'll see you again soon okay bye bye